Okay. that I'm showing a semi-good picture here of, all right. All right, so what can we say about computers? Well, computers are extremely dumb. I know it seems sometimes like they're smart, but what a computer can really do that you can't is do calculations super, super rapidly. The processing speed on modern computers is up in the gigahertz range. Gigahertz means billions per second uh, of calculations can be done, right? So the computer is not smart, it is just very, very fast, and any smartness that it has comes from the people who program software, and it makes it seem kind of smart. Now, of course, on a computer, you have your input devices, which are your keyboard and your mouse. And I'm hoping that we don't have to go over how those function, that those have been in use long enough that, uh, uh, that everyone knows how to use them. Uh, I know that I once had a computer when I was working at Williamstown Theater Festival, where actually at the beginning of putting the, uh, starting the computer, it would give you a tutorial on how to use the mouse. That's how new that idea was at that time, or at least at the time that that computer was made. Uh, it used to be that our computers didn't have mice. Everything was controlled through the keyboard uh, in the case of personal computers or when I was a mere slip of a lad in engineering school, we would actually have to punch cards that we would feed into a hopper on the computer and it would read the cards and read our program that way. So those of us who were in the, what was the introduction to computers class, we would have to make a stack of cards about this tall for every program that we ran. And then when the people who were in the upper levels, the, the 300 and 400 level classes, they would be coming in with stacks of cards like this and putting them in the hopper because every line of computer code had to have its own card. Okay, well, computers have come a long way. I am so glad that we have these modern computers like we have now. The computers, uh, well, uh, the first personal computer I had would run one program at a time. So, if you were running a, a program and you wanted to use another program, you had to stop, you had to turn the computer off, you had to put the disk for the program in the disk drive, turn the computer back on, that program would, uh, would be allowed to be used then. Uh, you could use that program, but then if you wanted to switch to another program, guess what? You had to save your work, turn the computer off, and so on, right? So obviously this was very clumsy. Today, with our modern Windows-type computers, 
man, how much stuff can you run at one time? You can have your browser up, you can have Word, you can have Excel, you can have PowerPoint, you can have all kinds of programs all going at the same time and just switch back and forth really rapidly. Okay, so the reason I'm standing over here in front of uh, this uh, giant computer that I built back in 2008 is that I want to show you what are the parts of the computer. All right, so So here I have the computer. I've taken the side off. Uh, the side is actually partially clear so we can see through it, except it's very dirty. Uh, this computer I used uh, for about 10 years before it started having such problems I couldn't use it anymore. And uh, it's got Windows XP on it which some of y'all may not even recognize as a, an operating system program. In the back here, I have various inputs that are similar to the modern computers. Uh, inputs for information, devices, outputs for the computer screen, uh, I've got all of those back here. I've got some on this computer that are even no longer uh, used. For example, there's a FireWire port here. And FireWire was a super fast way of getting information in and out of computers that was used for a while. Not anymore. They got better at other stuff. All right, up here we have the power supply. And the power supply supplies power to everything uh, in the computer, uh, right? There, in fact, it has a whole bunch of unused power supply plugs here. This is the motherboard. The motherboard is essentially what ties everything together in your computer. And on it, we have the processor, which is hidden under this fan. And the processor is the actual part that does the calculating, right? So you could get a faster computer because it has a faster processor or a slower computer because it has a slower processor. Uh, over here, we have the memory. This particular motherboard has uh, uh, four slots for RAM memory. Okay, so that, uh, uh, that really helps the more RAM you have, the faster it can calculate because the RAM gives it a place where it can hide things for a minute while it's working on other stuff. We have down here, uh, we have a couple of slots. Uh, one, this one is uh, the internet card right down here that gives you a connection for your IEEE uh, uh, 1333 cable or the kind of cable that you ordinarily plug into the computer for internet. This is the, uh, uh, the video card here. And you may notice on all of these things, there's a great big fan here there's a fan here, fan here, there's a fan here, fan for this guy, fan up front. That is because electronics make an awful lot of heat. 
I mean a lot of heat. And you have got to get rid of that or the electronics will stop working. So your computer is stuffed full of fans. Even if you have a little laptop computer, if we were to crack it open, we'd find out it has a lot of fans. In fact, I have one laptop that I don't like to use the mouse on the right side because it's blowing all that hot air out the right side. Luckily, I'm left-handed, so it's not a problem to use it on the left. All right. Here I have the two hard drives. You actually don't need more than one hard drive for a computer. But since I built this computer myself from a kit, I mean, I didn't start with raw silicon and move from there. Uh, I added another hard drive later. Uh, I have the DVD drive up here, uh, which I never figured out how to get the sound out properly. So if you wanted to watch movies on it, you would have to uh, uh, guess what they're saying and what sounds are going on. Doesn't make for a very pleasant uh, uh, viewing experience. Okay, so all of these parts work together to make a modern computer. And if we're talking about larger computers, more sophisticated computers, they still have basically the same idea inside, right? The very first computers were giant size. And, uh, and compared to this bad boy, very slow and clunky. And when I say giant size, I mean like they would sometimes take up half a building uh, for the computer to work. When the astronauts went on the uh, Apollo moon landings, the computers that they were using were 32K computers. Your phone has thousands of times the computing power that those computers have. Uh, so computers keep evolving, they keep becoming better and better and better, and they're pretty friendly now. Uh, right when I first used uh, uh, a Microsoft PC, you actually, it was very much like using a Linux PC today. You had to know the correct commands to put in to pull up the program that you wanted to use. Well, of course, now you click on an icon, program's there for you. Right, so these computers are uh, uh, are very sophisticated, right? But as I said, electronic computers, the first ones were uh, uh, were just giant size, very clunky, uh, and very uh, and it took a long time for them to work compared to the modern computers. All right. So, so much for computer anatomy. Now, Now, as I said before, computers are dumb. The computers
Let me... Okay. Okay, damn it. I want more icons here so that I can pull things up. Can y'all see that and read that pretty comfortably? Yes. Yeah. So thank God for that. All right. So so as I said, um, the first electronic computers were very large. Uh, in fact, uh, there's a song I have on my computer uh, called the Computer Shanty that goes through some of the history of computers. Uh, and uh, uh, one of the things it says, when mainframes were the only game, they stretched from wall to wall. The computer center took up half of engineering hall. Uh, but were those the first computers? Not really. We can think of, for example, Abba. that's not how you spell abacus. Oh, there you go. The abacus, the little uh, device, uh, exactly, where you have beads on some sticks and you can calculate moving beads back and forth. We can think of that as a computer. In your car, right, the computers we use now have um, uh, uh, use electronics, electricity, but you can also use fluids to uh, uh, you can also use fluids to drive computers. So, for example, if you have a really old car or a truck, the carburetor on the engine is actually a fluid computer. It's weighing the air and how much humidity is in it and the input you give it about how fast you want to go to know how much gasoline uh, and air to mix together to make that happen. A very, very old idea, well, relatively old, a couple of hundred years, is CNC or computer numeric control, right? The first computer numeric control was what's called the Jacquard system, where there were a bunch of wooden blanks that had slots and holes cut in them to tell the machine what to do. And those were all bound together with cloth so that you could feed that in and the machine would make 
something. Usually that was used in the knitting industry, the textile industry. Okay, so we have uh, a lot of uh, uh, a lot of ways that you can use computers, right? We can have mechanical computers. I used to have, and I, I despair about what happened to it, a little mechanical computer that my grandfather had had. And it was like a calculator before we had uh, uh, calculators. Uh, and, and you could just kind of take a pencil and dial in some numbers and it would add them up for you. So, um, uh, so pretty exciting uh, stuff. Um, in fact, the big The big breakthrough for computers Texas Instruments figured out how you could take a picture of a circuit board and by putting a few extra chemicals on that picture, make it into a circuit. Okay, so this suddenly made it that an electronic calculator did not have to be a huge clunky thing, you could make one that you could hold in your hand. And those first calculators were just arithmetic calculators, uh, like the ones that, uh, uh, like the ones that uh, uh, now uh, I mean, you go to the bank, they give you a calculator. You go to a, a convention, somebody gives away calculators that have their names on them. When those first came out, though, just a simple arithmetic calculator you could hold in your hand cost $100 to $150. Now, you can get a TI-89 for that which is pretty much the most uh, elaborate scientific calculator you can get. Uh, okay, so after they came out with that, right, so you had calculators, you had computers, that were very, very expensive. Um, and mostly they were just used for commercial um, uh, purposes. But the personal computer by Wozniak and Jobs was actually invented in a garage. Now it's really incredible to me how many uh, important breakthroughs in technology have been made in somebody's garage. How was the first TV made? I'll give you a hint. It was made in somebody's garage. This guy started working on the problem. His neighbor thought it was so interesting that the neighbor learned how to blow glass 
to make the vacuum tubes that were needed uh, to make the TV. Uh, so, uh, a, uh, uh, so when you see somebody fooling around with something in their garage, might want to give them a hand. Could be the next big thing. Okay, and then again, maybe not. Uh, <laughs> but, y'all are all here because you're interested in technology, how things work, um, and I'm, I'm hoping with a view towards making the world a better place. Have computers made the world a better place? Okay, I see two nods and two people looking at me like they just as soon shoot me. Depends on your perception, I guess. Yes, I know. As usual, young Victoria is reserving her opinion. She doesn't want to plunge in too fast and say the wrong thing. It's made us lazy, but it also created more plastic, which created more trash, which isn't good for our environment. But it's also good, like during this time, we can do online courses and not have to be here. Okay, those are all excellent points. Mm -hmm. um, any technology ends up shaking up the world in different ways. For example, in the late 19th century, if you worked in an accounting firm, how, what did you do? You sat at a table with pieces of paper and you were writing down numbers and adding them up by hand. When somebody came up with the mechanical adding machine, that was a huge shakeup in technology. All of a sudden, you didn't need as many people sitting around tables adding up uh, lists of figures. Right? Then the electric adding machine, oh man, you can go even faster. Right? The, the typewriter, um, all of a sudden, instead of having to have a really good handwriting style so people could read it, you had a way that you could quickly type a letter or a, a document uh, that would be legible. Uh, speaking of which, how many of you um, okay, this is Mr. Nez here in front of me, right? Okay. Oh, okay, sorry. All right. And Mr. B uh, Bedoni here? Right, okay. And I'm sorry, um, um, I, I've forgotten your name in Winter. the back. Winter? Oh, Winter. Okay, yeah. sorry. Sorry. I'm, <laughs> I'm terribly confused. I have trouble recognizing people, and it's not made easier with masks, let me tell you. <laughs> um, okay, so any technology ends up displacing people and uh, and some people are going to end up having to find new jobs. Okay, so the invention of antibiotics, we needed fewer grave diggers. Oh, wait, no, that's, that's a <laughs> terrible example. Uh, right, but every technology ends up having an effect on, psych uh, on society. Um, if the government had not broken up AT&T, 
we might still think a phone is something that only comes out of a wire in the wall to a big device that sits on your desk or your bedside. Right? But today, oh my God, I can go so many places and have phone service. I can be broken down by the side of the road and I don't have to walk the however many miles back to town or the nearest gas station. I can get on the phone and call Geico and say, hey, send your roadside guys out here. Which I actually have done before. Uh, when some suicide deer took out my truck. <laughs> Damn suicide deer. Uh, so, we want to make, uh, hmm, boy, now i got to bring this all back into the whole mainstream. Uh, so technology is, uh, tends to be disruptive. Even things that we think of as super simple now, like the bicycle. You'll notice my bicycle is in the back of this room with a flat tire. I've hardly had a chance to ride it all summer because the tire keeps going flat. But that's another question. Right? Technology disrupts, though. The technology of the automobile had a huge effect on society. The city of Cincinnati used to keep a huge herd of pigs. And you may be saying to yourself, wait a minute. Why does a city need a, uh, a, a herd of pigs? It's because they would drive them through the streets to eat all the horse manure that was left by the horses that drew the carriages and the wagons that people were using for their personal transportation or to move goods around. Um, so technologies tend to disrupt, but often in a good way. When the city of Cincinnati was able to get rid of their herd of pigs, they didn't say, oh, what a disappointment this is. They're like, oh, thank God we don't have to have any more pigs around. Because uh, I don't know if y'all know, but oi, pigs stink. Uh, so, uh, so all technologies are disruptive. As Ms. Uh, Charlie brought up, the computer has allowed us to be very lazy. You can get entertainment through the computer. You can do all kinds of uh, work tasks in a much easier way. But that also makes us more efficient. When I can sit down and type a document and my company doesn't need a pool of secretaries that I would call one in, dictate the letter to, they would type it, they bring it to me, I would either say it's all right or oh wait you made a mistake here. Right? Very much more efficient. Now, of course, that meant that secretaries were often uh, 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 had to go look for new jobs. Right? But you hardly see anybody who is classified as a secretary anymore. We still have a few administrative assistants. Um, right? But it's not the huge prevalence that we would have had uh, uh, before, right? Uh, so, uh, so technology is good in a lot of ways, right? We are freed from having to worry about getting a lot of people involved because we can do our task on the computer. All right, so. Now, one thing that we absolutely need to learn to do 
is to keep everything in an orderly manner on our computers. Okay? And for good or for ill, right? So we have the file explorer here. Uh, right? And you can see on the left side here, it gives me a list of places I could go. Uh, some of them are things like the desktop, downloads, documents, pictures. But then you see, wait, basic statistics and probability, human factors, human factors. Hey, how come there's two human factors? Uh, lean production, right? We have uh, those are folders, right? So if I click on documents, right, you can see that inside the documents, I have all kinds of folders. And some of these are, uh, I am not 100% sure what all of these do because not all of them are mine. Obviously, I share this computer with whoever teaches a class here. Right? But we go down to uh, some of the folders that I know are mine. Right? And you'll notice I have a, f a file for computer skills. And I am not even sure what is on there because it says the data was created was 2018. Let's take a look. Okay, so I have a bunch of PowerPoints on here from uh, when we were using uh, uh, a book about um, uh, Office 2016. Um, the problem that we found with the book was that it was um, it was too uh, far behind. It, it had things in there that obviously had been taken from books that were about Office 2012 or you know, the 97, uh, uh, 93, 97, or whatever, that were just out of date. All right, so when we have a file, we want to make sure that it is, uh, that it is one with a good label that anyone can understand. So for example here, this one, Harry Whiting short resume 6-26-17. Okay, so what that means is that's my two-page resume uh, that I created about June the 26th in 1917. Uh, wait, no, not 1917. <laughs> Even I wasn't alive in 1917. Uh, 2017. I knew it was one of those 17s, um, right? Now, that is, uh, uh, so anybody that comes and they look in this file can tell what that is. One thing that I have seen quite often uh, in this class or in, um, uh, professional settings is that someone will send you something that says my resume. Well that's no help whatsoever. My resume? What does that even mean? Okay, great. I know it's a resume. Whose resume is it? How old is it? Uh, right? So we want to be sure that we use uh, good file names when we are um, uh, uh, when we are storing a file, right? So let me drop this down. All 
All right, so a file name should have a description of what it is, uh, right? So we want that to be pretty much a full description, uh, right? When it says Harry Whiting short resume, that's a pretty good full description. And the date it was created. I thought the computer automatically created the date with it once you save it. The computer does label a file with a date. However, you want, on the, you want that on the file name so that you can instantly see and you don't have to be looking uh, at the properties or um, uh, because you're, you're absolutely right. Look, if we go here, we see that we have uh, the names of the different files. Then we have a date over here, but that date is not necessarily the date it was created. It's usually the last date it was modified or updated. Okay, so, and we want that date created on there because let's say we have Harry Whiting short resume um, 813-2020, uh, all right? So, all right, so that tells me when that was created. What do you do if you modify it, right? We'll call that original. Right, if I come in and I do some work on it and change it, I may want to save it as a new file name. Not that much different. 8262020. Okay, that's less than useful. All right, there we go. Modify. All right. Now. Now, another situation we have is we have uh, these folders, right? So let's go back to, here we go. All right, you'll notice how many folders there are here. What does B-U-W mean? I have no idea in the universe, and I'll bet y'all don't either. I've already seen one shrug of the shoulders. Right? But down here, right, a lot of times, here's ENGR 130 uh, HSH. All right, so I know that's for engineering graphics because that's the designation for that class. Uh, and that it was created by Scott Holliday, uh, right, because he uses the initials HSH. You may notice that it's easier to read file names when we use all caps on them, right? So computer skills, the file that I just had open is all caps. Engineering economy, all caps. Uh, facility design and planning, all caps. 
All right. Now, who among you does not know how to create a new folder? Well, maybe all four of y'all know, but people watching at home may not. Right? So I come out here to the left of the folders, and I right-click on my mouse. That gives me a dialog box, and I am going to come down here to where it says new, and it gives me the opportunity to, uh, uh, to do all kinds of things. You'll notice the first thing is the folder. You can also create a shortcut. You can create a Microsoft Access database, bitmap image, Microsoft Word document, uh, Microsoft PowerPoint presentation, Microsoft Publisher document, and uh, uh, TI group. I don't even know what that is. To be uh, stunningly uh, honest, a text document, right? So that would be very similar to the Microsoft Word document, except it would just be straight text. Sometimes you would want to create something like that to write computer code that you would put in. Uh, Microsoft Excel worksheet, a WinZip file, a WinZip ZipX file, right? But in this case, what we want is to create a folder. Oh. All right, so I have my new folder down here at the very bottom. Uh, and I am going to uh, call that folder Computer Skills August. What do you suppose it is today? 12, 13? I'm sorry? 12. 12. Now you can't put a comma in a folder name, right? So often I would use a dash 2020. Now a lot of times you see people that are classically trained on computers and when they put a name on a folder or on a file, they use uh, underscore instead of spaces or other, uh, other things of this nature uh, that, so that the whole file name or the whole folder name is a solid mass. With the computers we have now, you don't have to do that. Uh, you can leave spaces in your file or folder name. Uh, and in fact, I prefer to do that because it's uh, a little bit easier to read. Sometimes your mind trips on those little underscores. Okay, so I just hit enter and I've created uh, I've created a new folder. One that I will actually uh, erase later so that so that I don't confuse myself. Oops. All right, so we always want to use a strong descriptive name. On my own computer here at work, or my one at home, I use a lot of folders, and even my folders will have subfolders, and sometimes the subfolders will have sub-subfolders to try and keep things organized. One thing about having such a huge amount of storage memory on our computers is that, oh my God, they, they get messy fast. 
right? So, uh, so I have students hand me uh, flash drives sometimes, and they go, yeah, my homework is on the thing that says schoolwork. You open it up, it's 500, fi uh, 500 files there. Holy crap, how do I sort that out? Right, but if you have a computer skills folder, an engineering economy folder, uh, and uh, electrical engineering fundamentals, I don't know what classes you'll have, so I'm, I'm just guessing here. Uh, uh, and, uh, engineering graphics folder, then things are neatly slotted into folders where you can find them quickly. Uh, now one thing I've noticed is even amongst engineers, often they're kind of sloppy about this. So a lot of times someone will, will um, send me an email, hey, could you find me that um, that file that I sent you two years ago. And of course, because I've got it organized uh, and also know some tricks about searching, uh, then I can uh, 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 I can usually find that pretty quickly and send it back to somebody. Um, Uh, but, again, not everyone realizes the power of being organized on your computer. But I'm hoping to impress that on you guys. So, anyway, this document has not, uh, uh, has not been saved yet. Okay? So... I'm going to come over here, I'm going to hit File, Save As, uh, and I do not see computer skills as any of the folders that have been used recently, so I will hit Browse, and I've got computer skills August 12th, 2020. I'm not going to put it in there because I'm going to get rid of that one. So I'm going to look for, ah, there we go, computer skills. And I am just going to, uh, oh, I need to date this. You'll notice that it immediately just picked up my headline as the file name. All right, so this is 8, 12, 2020, separated by hyphens. I save that there. Now, one thing that Microsoft has done that really annoys me is they won't let you auto-save anymore unless you save to the cloud. Well, I do not want to save my documents to the cloud. And I have some practical reasons for that. One reason is I don't want Bill Gates reading my documents. Okay, well, Bill Gates isn't going to fool with my documents, but uh, I don't want those guys to have access to my documents in general. Another thing, here at school, here on the res, our internet service is often very uh, spotty uh, and inconsistent. So if you need to get something off the cloud and the internet isn't working properly, that ain't going to happen. So I always save on my computer. Uh, computers have a lot of storage space. And unless you are saving uh, videos, uh, uh, music, other very huge files, you should have plenty of room on your computer. Okay, but you have to remember, 
I'm just going to type some nonsense down here. Now if I, uh, if I go to close this document, you'll notice it says, do you want to save changes to the basics of computers 8-12-2020, right? And it illuminates the saves key. There's the don't save, and then there's cancel. Okay, well, I could save this, but what would be the point? These, uh, you know, this stuff that I just put down here has no value whatsoever. Right, so I'm going to put don't save. Okay, so, so as I, as I said before, let's save our documents, any kind of file, we want to be sure that we save it with a good file name that we're going to recognize when we read it, or even other people will recognize if they read it. Uh, we, uh, we want to separate things into folders rather than just dump everything in the documents section uh, of the computer. Um, okay. So, um, oh, okay. So what happens if we want to find something? Okay, well, now we have this little cool deal here where I can start uh, 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 down in this box. I can put my cursor down there, click it, and then put basics of computers. Um, right? And it shows the document I just created, and it also gives me some other things if I want, if I'm actually looking to search the web and try and find something. Right? So I open that file again, right? And there's my, right? This can be very useful if we had several different versions of this and we have them all date stamped so that we can look and we can say, oh yes, this is the latest version. I click on that, I pull it up, I start working, right? But if I, if I start changing it a lot, I want to save it under a new date stamp. Ugh. I don't know about y'all, but it is exhausting to talk for a whole class period with this damn mask on. Um, all right, so let me throw this forum open to any questions that you, the students, may have. Any questions at all? Is there going to be any homework? Uh, yes, homework was assigned on the uh, in the last class. Okay. Typically, we'll have one homework and one quiz per week. All right, and uh, look, let's face it: the homework in this class, for the most part, is super easy. Um, it's, uh, right, I want to teach you how to use these programs, and that's going to be uh, pretty easy to do. These programs are very um, self-explanatory and user-friendly, uh, where, uh, you know, you start to get into some other stuff, programs to create neural nets, Boy, don't even get me started <laughs> about how complicated those are. Um, 
right? Actually having to write code for a program, that starts to get more complicated. These things using Word, using Excel, using PowerPoint are very easy and I like to think very fun, which gives you an idea of how pathetic my life is. You're just a different generation. <laughs> well, I am a different generation. Because yeah. my father used to, I don't know, be so odd when you could change documents so easily on Microsoft versus the old typewriter where you had to go back and correct it or whatever scratch or whatever you had to use back then. Going from a regular typewriter to an electric typewriter to go into a computer. So, Corrections were easier now versus then. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, you cannot even Especially imagine down. what a yeah. huge pain in the butt it was yeah. even down to down have to measuring. correct on a manual typewriter. Yeah. Um, okay, well, I'm, I'm feeling very wrung out, so um, uh, I'm going to uh, go ahead and give you one more Last call for uh, uh, for uh, where is that? Now I've lost the folder I was going to dump. Oh, there it is. Uh, one uh, last call for questions. Hearing no questions, uh, we will meet again next Monday at 8 o'clock and one uh, and Marla Price the famous librarian is going to take us through aspects of how do we uh, do library stuff uh, okay uh, have fun um, to return the quiz uh, oh absolutely yes in fact, I was uh, meant to ask for that. All right, thank you. No worries. Can I have a quick question? Um, sure. I might have talked about the online value as well. Do you think this inferential Ensuring statistics could also be substituted for the, what is it, in engineering 169? No. It cannot be. No, 169 is the beginning course that then this builds on. Okay. Why? What seems to be the problem? I'm trying to get some classes in, and a lot of these classes that aren't offered this semester, so. But I've already taken okay, probability look. and statistics. The, the math that was that the stat already. And I haven't seen this offered within the past year, oh. so. Boy, that's fun. If you've taken that, though, you can take influential. Okay. But will it fulfill the basic statistics? Yeah, yeah we can do a course substitution for the four. Okay. Okay. Um, Try to finish up. <laughs> well, good on you. But I'm also going to drop um, Dr. Rags class because I took the engineering materials, but I don't need it. The last one I needed it, but I don't need it now. Oh, uh, Dr. Roman does not do you guys any favors no. by changing things around so much. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to be in my fifth year next year, so. you to take 18 hours yeah. that semester? Oh, yeah, thank semester. you so much, Mike. Um, hmm. All right, so are you in this class now? No, because I haven't taken instrumentation one. What oh, bloody hell. Yeah, and I haven't taken AC circuits either, which makes that's what I'm taking another higher class. Okay, well, look, 
when I did the schedule, everything that's a semester one, three, five, or seven should be on the schedule. Uh, right? And then you're exactly right. Two, four, six, and eight will then be in the spring. Uh, so yeah, inferential statistics is a possibility. Why not? Uh, you already did linear algebra. Are you going to do another? Um, these are the two I'm going to be taking this semester, oh, okay. along with uh, PowerPoints. Cool. Yeah. And I'm going to take a bunch of my videos as well. All right. So what else are you missing? The, uh, Chemistry, <laughs> but that's a different department. I'm missing mainly instrumentation one, AC circuits. Electronic circuits and systems, I can't take without taking instrumentation one or AC circuits. So I guess they offer instrumentation one in the second semester. Right. Along with AC circuits, so I'll have to take the next semester in that. But I'm hoping to take all three classes co decently, co consistently. <laughs> Concurrently, <laughs> Together. I think. Concurrently. <laughs> Together. <laughs> right. I don't see why you wouldn't be able to do that. Um, I would like to but get yeah, since out you, of the way up here. Since you've had uh, uh, intro to statistics, then inferential st uh, statistics would just be an uh, extension. An extension of it. Substitution. Okay. If uh, Dr. Romine is too lazy to do that, uh, come to me and, okay. and I'll uh, help you with that. Okay, thank you. I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> he is. <laughs> Turn off the camera. It's been recording our little conversation. <laughs> yeah, you shouldn't have said it. <laughs> How's your okay. summer?